Welcome to the Doghouse, a show where Riverside Brookfield High School's School of Business students pick creative ideas to three industry professionals. First up is Nick Pan, a marketing genius who worked in advertising and graphics for decades. Nick's marketing communications firm evolved into the largest healthcare marketing firm in the country. Sue Reardon is an entrepreneur and founder of Sweet Spot, a co-working community in downtown LaGrange. Her creative and ingenious work spans from restaurants to retail to professional services. Ed Farrell is a residential real estate agent with 35 years of banking experience. Ed assisted small business owners and entrepreneurs with starting and growing their businesses with loans and a wide range of banking services. All three dogs are ready to hear your new ideas. Are you? Hi, my name is Alexa Camacho. My name is Sarah Danti, and our company is called Aqua. Okay, so we, we hate to be late to our classes because we just went to go get water, and there's a really big line, and you get to your class, and the water tastes awful. So we made some a water dispenser. Uh, it's um, like a uh, water dispenser they come in singles in cup or in rows made of two, three or four and a uh, problem with them in our in the schools are like they they don't work with clear water bottles we fixed this and uh, we have a new sensor for it and you can choose there are four flavors one is still water and the other ones you can choose it and yeah, and there's a touch screen where you can choose the capacity and the, um, the flavor. Uh, uh, still water is for free, but like the flavors you have to pay, it. it's like from, it goes from five cents to 25 cents. And the touch screen is 9.8 by 7.1 inches long. And we provide also um, paper cups for free if you don't have a water bottle? Yeah, well the price range is depending on the water bottle, obviously, that you have. I mean, you're not going to pay 25 cents for a little water bottle. That's why it goes from 5 cents to 25. Any questions? And the machines? Uh, They're made of recycled metal. No, I mean, uh, they purchase machines that you are, you have to do those have to be manufactured? Yeah, they have. To your for us to make them is 300, but for us to make the machines is 300 um, each. But um, we sell them at least for 800 just to get um, off an investment. Usually our most competitor is LK, which is, you could see that it's mostly in schools, hospitals, and public facilities. So theirs is a thousand two hundred and thirty. So we're making it at a better price for more. So is your strategy to compete on price? Yes. Okay, strictly price. Mm -hmm. and also like we have flavors in our machines and the normal machines have only still water. Okay. And also the clear water bottles. You usually have to put your hand in front of the sensor and then put the water bottle in it, which at the end your hand gets all wet. Um, how do you pay and who is it is it all by your phone um, is it by coins no nope, it's it by coins. coins okay and uh, do you have to pay to the schools or the plate the place that you're having it for the access to their property no as you can see it's right here no I mean for you to to locate your d water dispensers in those mm -hmm. locations do you pay them to have their do you pay them to you're gonna yeah, we haven't think about okay. it right now. And so, th the and so you're, you went from a nickel to whatever. You're going to mm -hmm. try and amortize your cost of the equipment, the um, the, uh, the the additives that you have, mm -hmm. and the and the location. Whether they're charging you rent, or they're letting you go there, whether they're giving you access to the water, um, and each school might have a different way to tap it. And part of the reason why the water tastes bad is different places have different water. Yeah. Can, have you done anything where you will only locate your, pla your, your places with you know, Chicago water or not well water? Because it would still have a different flavor depending on where you went. Mm. 
Well, our main marketing, well not marketing, where we sell it to, I think would be most public facilities, mostly in the city. Okay. Because usually, if you go to, let's say, Starbucks, it's like a dollar for the smallest mm-hmm. water bottle ever. Or you go to Jewel and same, the taxes there are huge for just one water bottle. You'll end up with $3 for just the same as here, you would be for 25 how did you uh, investigate the uh, water machine? Like you talked about, there's you can have four flavors, and the <coughs> machine is a lot dispenser is a lot cheaper. Did did you actually do some investigation on? Yes, we did. Okay. So as um, as an investor, you know, I would be interested in more information about you know some of what you put into costs and such, and your thoughts on marketing and and everything that, that goes with it because I think water, you know, that's what everybody's going after today. Yeah. You know, at that. So because it's, I, the other thing I, I just want to ask about and think about, because it's in the public sector, mm-hmm. it should need to, it needs to be as indestructible as possible. And if there's going to be actual money inside it, mm-hmm. there's going to be someone that's want to get at that money, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, even if it's quarters, nickels, and dimes. Um, and so you might uh, have to do a lot to ensure that you can go collect your money Mm -hmm. and the machine is still there when you go to do so. So think about Apple Pay Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. one of those smartphone payments so you're not dealing with that. Thank you. Thank you. you. My name is Manuel Morantes. And I'm Edgar Vale. And we are selling a food pill and also gummy. Uh, the food pill and gummy is almost like a, it's almost like a meal inside of a pill. So you get the same like amount of protein, uh, vitamins, and like the feeling of being full within a pill. For example, like if, and it'll probably be like for people who like are adventurous. So people who are hiking, cycling, and Manny and I are like, we're avid hikers. So we tend to like notice that we don't have enough room or we don't want to carry the weight of food around. So we came up with a pill or a gummy that has the same um, nutritional value as food as well. And also we, uh, our target is campers. So they, br- they may bring food, it may be an extra weight or you, know, you don't want bears going through your tent or you know, other animals going through your food and having a problem there. So a food or pill, would it, uh, it would get rid of that problem. And we, we had the or we created the two options with the food and pill because with the pill gummy. most a uh, gummy, uh, with the pill you would need to like have some sort of water or something to use to swallow it down. So we also came up with the option with the gummy. So if you're camping or if you're riding a bike or something, you don't always don't have water on you. So we made a gummy as well. And the pill is a gel pill. Gel pill. Or like gel. a gummy. A gel pill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And. W- <laughs> And to start up our company and to rent out space to create the product, we would need $100,000. Does it taste good? <laughs> well, <Yeah>. there's, there's <laughs> also like, there's like flavors as well that like, we'll manufacture flavors to like, we would take uh, customers' feedback from the first like batch we would make and we'll, uh, we'll create like a survey asking what flavors would you like in the product as well. I think there's, a, there's definitely a market for this, and there's other products that are out there, and mm-hmm. most of them have some sign of kind of a hook or a name or something. Do you guys have a concept uh, of a name that you're going to call? Our it? slogan is uh, Bone Appeal Tea. Bone Appetit? <laughs> bone Appeal. Oh, bone Appeal? Bone Appeal. Bone Appeal. And, and, it, and, and it's, just, it's just basically for nutrition, you're not looking for someone to, to sort of it's not an energy thing it's not a it's, it's just it's more of like yes nutritional value yeah. it's it cuts out the you know the food and all that so you just take the pill so i'm running like crazy in the morning and i'm not going hiking but i'm running like crazy <laughs> to get get to the office i can throw a couple of pills in my bag and that yes. takes care of breakfast mm-hmm. And then, so if you're like on a multi-day hike or bike ride, we also do have the options of a 12 of a 12 like pill bottle and also 24 pill bottle as well. Got it. Did you do any investigation as to how a pill would satisfy the hunger so your stomach would feel like you had 
you had eaten something. Before. That's that's for our further research, but that's over our general ideas to give it the substitute as like the same as it would for food. Give it the same uh, proteins and like daily nutrients you need on a daily basis, so it wouldn't be any real. Uh, so it's almost like a vitamin pill. Yeah. A multivitamin. But, yeah. Yes. That right. fills you up too. That gives you the feeling. That of fills you. Up. Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, all right. I was just wondering if you did any research to find out if, in fact, there's a, the ability to make you feel full after having a pill. I feel like we would have to incorporate some type of carb or something inside the pill, like a bread that usually fills you up as well. Oh. And then we would we would like sell our product, or we would have stores um, um, sell our product like REI. Uh, GNC and um, like the exporting good. Do you have to get FDA yes. clearance for this? Yes. Yeah. And the uh, the pills will come in those tablets, so they won't be uh, tampered with. Mm -hmm. And the uh, gel will come in a bottle. I, again, I what I like is that you guys have a life experience and that you've uh, identified something that everyone that that rides or camps or whatever. Yeah doesn't want to carry all this stuff but they definitely need it yes and you come up with a with an idea I encourage you to just keep pursuing those kind of things because there's the, 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 I, I know entrepreneurs that had had an idea and it turned into a product and you just have to keep pushing to get to where you want to go on it I agree with that I mean I think that there's you know you've identified something here that yeah will be could be very marketable. Mm -hmm. You know, with that, just keep exploring it, okay. keep going deeper. You'll have you'll have to pull in other other people with 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 strengths or other other things to, that that yeah. can help keep you moving in that direction. And I would encourage you to to just say this is our idea, you know, and just keep pulling on people and and and, and draw on their knowledge and expertise to help you get to where you want to go. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think conceptually it's uh, a great idea. I think many people have thought about it and I've, and I've heard about it before. And the big concern is uh, that uh, obviously it, it sounds fictional only because... Has it been done before? Huh? Has it been done before? It, it actually, I have heard about it, but they can't. The fact of not feeling full is the difficult part yeah. mm. you know so if it's just so you don't have to carry food with you so it's really convenient for yeah. hikers and all those other things that's one thing but think of the food market if people could feel full and even taste some flavor and be done with it 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 would probably be a broader market than just hikers and mm -hmm. yeah. things of that nature so conceptually, though, I think it's it's a great idea. Yeah, Thank and you. I think the gummy bear, well, the gummy gel yeah. thing, not the gummy bear, but the gummy gel kind of begins to move you towards that because if you're chewing something, your brain is mm -hmm. telling you that you're actually eating. Yes. Yeah, you know, with that, so it could have. Yeah. 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 With that. So, cool. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, dogs. Today we have one simple question for you. Do you ever have stress? Are you ever stressed out going to sleep? Um, so today we have like a solution for that. We have uh, the relaxing pillows. Uh, did you know 38 to 58 percent of uh, people go to bed um, or wake up with um, headaches in the mornings? Uh, according to a study in, that was made by uh, St. Louis University, the students at St. Louis University. And so what we created is a, a scented pillow. And so, basically, our product is just a pillow, and it has oils inside that react to our body heat when you go to sleep. So, say we have scents like uh, lavender or ocean breeze. So, our goal for our customers is to sleep well. So, our pillows help them sleep better because when they fall asleep, they get that scent that they like or enjoy, and have a good night's rest. Yeah, and then they wake up like ready, ready for the day. You know. Cool. Great job describing mm -hmm. the problem you're still solving. Thank that's you. a that's a big deal, and that you had some mm -hmm. stats to go along with that. Thank you. Know, with that, so um, who's going to buy it? 
Oh, well, we're selling it like to, to people that are stressed. They're like just regular people because you know people, a lot of people, not just like that work like say in a stressful job. Like j they just might want to smell like the, the smell nice in the morning. Because <laughs> you the know, cost of, what's the cost of the pill? Oh, uh, we're selling two pillows for a hundred dollars, okay. and then the cost to make uh, two pillows is around twenty-three dollars. And how are you going to distribute it? Who are you going to sell it to? What? We plan on using uh, big stores like Walmart and Target, etc. Yeah, and then we're also going to have like our own website, so we could sell it there as well. How did you establish your cost? Um, and is someone else making the pillow that for you? Do you want to describe like how the pillow is? Oh, well, we were using like something like related to like Tempur-Pedic, and so like we, we just we're using like using that. It, that and then like we're gonna, we, we buy the oils and so we, we mix it together. And so, so you're going to be doing that at your, at a facility that you're yeah. going to operate from. So there'll be, you'll be able, I see multi-color. Multi yeah. Uh, are you... Uh, planning on having the different colors, different scents? Yeah. We you mentioned two scents. Yeah, that, I mean, those are just no examples. Pun. So <laughs> <laughs> we have <we> plan <laughs> extending and our company and going with more scents as we go. How long does the scent last and is it possible to rescent or do you have to go out and buy another $100 pillow? Um, well, we, it's <laughs> a good question. Um, we hope like by the time you fall asleep, the scent, like the scent will go away by the time you fall asleep and you're already sleeping. By the time you wake up, the scent will be gone. Yeah, but like we, we have like a little bottle that comes with the pillow. And so like you could also like put a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's so it's you it's could buy, oh, I'm sorry. Ahead. So you could buy uh, scents yeah. <laughs> at, uh, after you've bought the pillows and resent the pillows. Is that yeah. the idea? So you don't have to buy another set of pillows. So you know in candles, when they sell candles, they sell unscented ones and they're pretty popular. Have you given any thought to having an unscented pillow? No, we haven't actually. I'm just curious, it might be something that, you know, somebody doesn't particularly want that scent in their face uh, all yeah. night or maybe have a reaction to it. The way you priced it, did you go out and do some investigation to see if $50 a pillow would be a fair market price? How did you come up with it? Well, for the, because we, we know uh, a Tempur-Pedic pillow, it costs $120. Like, we went onto their website and it said $120. And so we were like, that's way too expensive. And so we just came up with the price at $50 a pillow would be, would be okay. So the price is driving the product. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Wow, that's that's a tough way to go. Mm -hmm. and, Very tough. Way and to you go. think? Uh, and you said you're going to sell the pillow at Walmart for yeah. fifty dollars. Uh, well, it's like it comes in a bundle of two, and so it'd be a hundred dollars. But yeah, technically. But again, it, I'm I'm. The the Tempur Pedic is sold at a high end place, mm -hmm. and they're going to attract a certain dollar cus customer that's willing to spend certain dollars. You're looking to distribute yours at Walmart, where there's a cost conscious customer that's going there to buy and you think that that person that's looking to save money on everything that they're buying might be interested in spending $100 for two pillows? I would just consider your, your network, you know, your distribution and your point of sale. You, you had me in the beginning of the presentation about the idea that people don't sleep well or have trouble yeah. sleeping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And are you suggesting that by scenting the pillow that solves that problem? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, sleep into a scent that you like. Like, I don't know, like, personally, like, a scent that someone, maybe someone out there likes ocean okay. breeze or lavender, and it helps them sleep better. Yeah, because you, cause Cause you, know you can get scented things on your bedside that also gives off a scent. And I'm, I was just wondering mm -hmm. if you had done any investigation into the fact that maybe uh, s scenting the pillow cause people to sleep better. And uh, I'm guessing that's, you don't know that for a fact necessarily, mm -hmm. but I tell you what, it's a neat idea. Thank you. And thank you very much. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you so job, much. Guys.